keep those issues out of neighborhoods near the St. Mary's Strip. Yeah, we're three hours in and San Antonio, the police department put up barricades to keep those streets clear of, you know, the usual line of cars. It's part of an ongoing study that could lead to a more permanent solution in that area. The night team's John Paul Barajas is live for us on the St. Mary's Strip. So, John Paul, I said before, we're three hours into this. What are we seeing so far? Tim, Stephanie, I heard y'all talking about it earlier. Fiesting, everybody's having a good time, but the St. Mary's Strip is slow. Business isn't moving too fast right now, but we have run into some people who did not know the barricades were going up until they actually used this side street to park on a lot and were upset that they had to park farther than they would have liked. Now, other people who did know that this was going to be happening had lots of mixed reviews about those barricades and that close to through traffic sign being up and being the solution. Minutes before 7 p.m., San Antonio police officers started setting up barricades on side streets all along the St. Mary's Strip. The hope to detour bar goers from parking in those neighborhoods. There's more than a dozen barricades and several police officers on scene, which is frustrating for some. It's a little drastic, man. Like, you know where you're living. Like, you don't go to a vegan restaurant and ask for a steak. Steven Story lives in the area. Some of his neighbors don't share his viewpoint, saying they're happy something is being done. The president of the Tobin Hills Community Association, Parker Dixon, explained people coming out to have a good time have a blatant disregard for their homes. Drunken behavior is, is as if uh, as if we don't exist. You know, they, they use our lawns to, to go to the bathroom. They vomit they, and uh, they sit and drink in front of our properties in their cars and then they just leave their trash. This is day one of the pilot program that residents and authorities agreed on. Dixon adding this is just a test and part of a parking study to observe where people will park with roads closed. Some question if police were going to be checking IDs at the barricades, but tonight that only appears to be happening at local bars. Still, people are bothered by the parking inconvenience. Because then they have to walk farther and then, dude, that's, a, that's how stuff happens, you know? Like they're walking, they have to walk, you know, a couple blocks down or they gotta walk way over there, dude. I mean, that's how stuff happens. That's Which for those upset by the decision, Police Chief William McManus had a stern response. Take an Uber. You're going down there drinking, take an Uber. Kill two birds with one stone. Uh, restore the peace and tranquility of the neighborhoods and keep people who've been drinking off the roads. Now, people here tell us they don't expect a large crowd till about midnight or through the weekend. And that's when the true test will be if these barriers are enough. Uh, we are obviously to see a little bit more of a crowd here, but uh, these barriers will be picked up at 2 a.m. and then put back out Friday at 7 p.m. and that will be the routine throughout the weekend. And as you see, some people here still might not know that these barricades are up, stopping parking from here being here. So this is uh, the first day of the pilot program. So lots of studying to see if this is going to work. We'll make sure to keep an eye on it and bring you guys the latest. On the same Mary Strip, John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. John Paul, thank you. Ooh. There's some fun. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> even the carnival there. Sky 12 over the carnival right now. Nice little live cam. I mean, even the carnival's fiestaing. Got to say, Katie, it's good stuff. Beautiful it, night to be out there. Yes. Oh, yes. Perfect. Perfect. Very comfortable. We got up to 80 this afternoon. So at the start of the evening, at the very start of Fiesta Fiesta, it was a touch warm, but our temperatures are down in the 60s. We cooled down really nicely this evening. Our morning low was 47. So a pretty big temperature swing from morning to afternoon today. And we'll see a similar swing tomorrow. Another change for your Friday is some more wind. The wind will be a bit more noticeable tomorrow. High temperature in Catula this afternoon, 91, 85 in Pleasanton, 81 in Kerrville. And now it's much cooler all across South Central Texas, down to 64 currently in Gonzales, 61 in Comfort, 69 Port SA, and 72 uh, in Castroville. Our air is very dry. Our dew points are in the 30s and 40s, even some 20s out in Lost Maple. So very dry air and also some lighter winds this evening have helped to uh, allow our temperatures to drop so quickly, especially after the sun went down. Still a bit of a breeze from Stinson over to Port SA, but overall winds are pretty light.
overnight. That changes tomorrow. By lunchtime on Friday, our winds will really start to pick up. It will be windy at times tomorrow with some wind gusts maxing out in a lot of spots near 30 miles per hour as you go north and west into the hill country. Wouldn't be surprised to see a few wind gusts up to 35 miles per hour. Bottom line, not the windiest day we've ever had, um, and it's not going to be a big nuisance, but it is going to be much more noticeable than it was today. That south wind tomorrow that is windy at times will help to nudge up our dew point numbers by the weekend, so it'll still feel fairly dry and comfortable tomorrow, but with that south wind in place all day by the weekend, our dew point numbers will be back in the 60s and it will start to feel a bit more humid. That will continue all the way into early next week, and that'll coincide with our next chance of rain that arrives on Monday. And I know we've been saying it, but boy, we need it. Here's the very latest drought monitor. This is updated each Thursday, so this is the latest uh, snapshot for you. The whole KSAT 12 viewing area um, is under some type of drought with the worst of it south and west. Places like Catula over into southern Maverick County, that's where we have exceptional drought. That is as bad as it gets. So our next chance of rain is much needed, highly anticipated. Unfortunately, it won't be all that we need, but we will see an isolated chance of rain pop in Monday and even some scattering of showers and storms late Monday into Monday night. And the setup here, what we'll be watching over the next couple of days is an upper level low moving in from the West Coast. This will sweep over Texas Monday and Monday night, bring us some lifts some rain making energy, and that'll bring us the chance of rain Monday into Monday night. That does coincide with the river parade, of course. Still a little too early to nail down exact timing for these rain chances on Monday, but you know, we'll keep you updated over the next couple of days. No rain for your Friday, just another pretty sizable temperature swing from morning to afternoon and also a bit more wind warm this weekend and then that rain chance on Monday. Keep your case at weather app handy. We'll keep you updated there and also for all the other Fiesta events. Guys. Oh yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. So Greg, there was never a doubt that Manu was going to make it to the Hall of Fame. Not at all, because given his body of work, not just in the NBA, not just with the Spurs and the four championships, but internationally as well. When we come back, Manu gets that call to the Hall in a first ballot event. And who's leading after the first round of the Valero Texas Open? Coming up. Sources confirming what was reported earlier today by The Athletic that the four-time NBA champion will be a first ballot member of the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame for the class of 2022. The official announcement will come Saturday at the Final Four of the NCAA Tournament after Manu helped lead the Spurs to championships in 2003, 5, 7, and 14 before retiring in 2018 as one of the most popular players in Spurs history. He brought the Euro step to the NBA along with the way he helped his home country, Argentina, win an Olympic gold medal. Meantime, our San Antonio Spurs have some work to do. They want to catch the Lakers with the 10th and final play in position with just six games left in the regular season. That's after they missed a golden opportunity to upset the number two seeded team in the West of Memphis Grizzlies when this last second attempt would not go down for Kelton Johnson. The Spurs fell 112 to 111, but they are only a half game behind the Lakers. They get a chance to host the Blazers twice in the next three days starting tomorrow night. But don't ask about the beatdown they put on the Blazers as part of their undefeated road trip. That's right out the window. Uh, we can't look at that. Uh, these are two big games back to back that we need to win. Um, so that's all we're focused on. We're in a position right now where every game counts. Um, we want to solidify that um, that playing spot. Uh, so yeah, um, games like that are, are must wins for us. Okay, the Lakers are playing tonight against Utah. Let's see what happens tomorrow against the Blazers. And then here's a look at the Western Conference standings and where it really counts at the bottom of this. San Antonio, a half game behind the Lakers, so it'd be nice if the Lakers lost tonight and the Spurs win tomorrow. Picture perfect weather for the opening round of the Valero Texas Open at the beautiful JW Marriott TPC Resort Course. Fan favorite defending champion Jordan Speed having a rough goal of it this afternoon. One over on 14. And in the sand next to the green, but check out this perfect pitch that would set him up for his first. First bird of the day. He finished even on the day. Matt Kuchar on 18 has 12 foot putt to move him to 500 into the lead until Russell Knox comes along with 15 from this fringe to put him at seven under and in sole possession of the lead. JJ Spawn looking for his first win on the PGA Tour and he could get it if he can keep making shots like this eagle on eight. I feel like that's the best feeling going from one over to one under. So that was that kind of gave me a lot of 
energy and you know confidence going the rest around. A lot of good and bad that can happen here. I feel like this this place really punishes the bad shots, but it's it's a type of course that it rewards good quality shots, and uh, I was able to kind of maintain some some good golf throughout my second nine today. All right, take a look at the leaderboard here. One stroke lead right now just for Russell Knox. You see Matt Kutchar in there at five under, along with three others. You take a look at some other notables that includes Finau two under, McElroy even, along with Ricky Fowler and Jordan Speed. The National Invitational Tournament with Texas A&M and Xavier comes down to a last shot. Next. The Aggies in the Big Apple tonight, Madison Square Garden, taking on Xavier Musketeers for the NIT Championship. Now, Aggies, Quinton Jackson going to work down low for the bucket to get AM within three. He led everybody with 23 points tonight. The Aggies would take the lead 72 71 on free throws. Xavier with the ball, 5.9 seconds to play. They inbound to Jack Nungy in the paint, and he gets a one handed bank shot to fall. Xavier takes the lead 73 72. Aggies have 3.1 seconds left. Have to go the length of the court. Hassan Biara gets it to Tyrese Radford, who races down court, pulls up for the jumper. And if it would have been good, <laughs> it would have been the game winner. But it's not. It's in and out. Aggies drop a heartbreaker, 73. 72. The Northside Swim Center hosted the first full day of competition for the Tier Pro Swim Series with prelims this morning, finals this evening. And Olympic superstar Katie Ledecky competed in her first long course race here in the Alamo City. KSAT 12's Andrew Seeley was on hand and has more. Some of the biggest names in swimming were on deck Thursday night, but the main attraction was seven time Olympic gold medalist. Hey. The most dominant female swimmer in history added another win to her resume, touching first in the A final of the 200 meter freestyle in one minute, 55.66 seconds, right where Ledecky wants to be. Yeah, I felt good. Um, it was great to race here in San Antonio. Um, great facility and a lot of fun to see some, some friends and get some good racing in as we gear up for a big summer. U.S. trials for the World Championships are about a month away, so this meet serves as a valuable training tool for the nation's best swimmers. Just focusing on the details and um, trying to execute race plans, and it feels great to have uh, more of a normal atmosphere at meets now. Um, fans back, which is awesome. Great to see some faces in the in the crowd and get that energy behind us again. Ledecky has two more events she will compete in here at this meet. Tomorrow morning she's going to dive in for the 400 meter freestyle, which is going to be the longest event she will swim at this competition. From Northside Swim Center, Andrew Seeley, KSAT 12 Sports. That is a great event with world class athletes and it goes through Saturday here in San Antonio. So exciting that we have that right here. Big time. Awesome. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back after this. All right, so you know by now, Fiesta's here. Right now on KSAT.com, we have a peek at past celebrations and traditions. And some of the photos that you're going to see online date back as far as 1904. Yeah, pretty cool. There are pictures of parade floats, crowds, and Fiesta royalty. It's all online for you at KSAT.com. Imagine trying to get a forecast for Fiesta events back in 1904. Oh, they just hung the old rain rock yeah. and said, we'll go for it. <laughs> uh, all right, well, our only chance of rain here in the seven day forecast comes Monday and Monday night, of course, that is the river parade. We'll be watching forecast trends very closely the next couple of days. So keep checking in with us guys. Just need the ponchos. All right, thank you. Well, that does it for the night beat. Don't forget that Good Morning San Antonio starts at 430. Good night. We'll see you this weekend. Good night.